Okay, this is EENG360, and it is Lab 6, Part 2. In Part 1, we did the super register that had the ability to do, um, let's see, a 4-bit uh, register Q that we could do a parallel load on. We could count up or down when it was enabled, parallel load, synchronous clear, asynchronous, or clock, and an asynchronous reset. We wrote the code, and we, uh, you know, we set up our register transition block right here. We did our next state logic on three variables, and then we had our output logic. The thing that is unique about this is that we had a generic up here. And the whole point on the generic is I have this thing called the divisor. And that's the number of clocks that I'm going to delay in between updating my counter. Okay, 50 million. I believe that's 50 million. Is that 50 million? There's a thousand. 50 million, yeah. Um, we have a 50 megahertz clock, so 50 million is going to wait one second. But now I want to simulate this, so it's going to be ridiculous to try to wait 50 million clocks when I simulate. So let's show how we would simulate this guy and change that. So let's do a new source, and I want a test bench, so let's call it what? TB um, super register, is that right? TB super register test bench, okay. Let's do that. We'll uh, put a test bench file in there. Okay. And then my Explorer node comes over to here. There's my super register. There's my test bench file. Okay. Let's uh, get rid of all the um, get rid of all the comments here. Let's leave that one in there because we might find we need it later. Now notice this is the component declaration, but it didn't put in a generic block. And then down here's my instantiation. So what I need to do is I need to modify that declaration so that, um, let's see, I need to modify that declaration so that it actually has a generic statement in there. So underneath the component, we need to put a generic in the declaration. And let's see, we could uh, do this and let's see what's the generic that I want. I want DVSR and it is of type integer. Okay, so at that point I've included the generic. It didn't seem to get stubbed in there automatically uh, when I declared this in the test bench file. Now when I instantiate it down here, when we instantiate it, we have to actually put a generic map statement in the instantiation. So let's do that. Let's uh, take this port map and put it here and then come down and do a generic map on that guy and let's see when I do a generic map let's see I want to set that guy DVSR equal to 8 okay and let's see what do we got here I've got uh, um, okay I don't think there's a semicolon there after the generic map statement okay save that and yeah, that's good. Now we can go down to here. Here's my clock. Where's my clock period? Let's make that 20 nanoseconds so it looks like a uh, 50 megahertz clock. Okay, 20 nanoseconds. And then down here, let's uh, get rid of all this stuff. And what we'll do down there is um, just uh, put some sample data. Now you can put whatever you want in here to exercise this thing. But I think what we'll do here is we'll initially wait for 30 seconds and then enable the counter. And then I'll wait for 20 seconds and I'll set down equal to 1 to see to show that. Actually, let's just change that to 0 so it up counts. Okay. And then we'll wait for 2,000 seconds and then I'll do my assert. All right. So let's save that. Let's uh, click the VHDL component. And we'll compile our component. Then let's select the test bench and we'll check syntax on the test bench. Make sure the test bench is selected, and then we'll simulate. Okay. Now, what's going to happen here is I overrode that 50 million delay with, um, what was my delay? Okay, well, we're going to have to see here. Let's go back and look really quick. In my test bench file, when I instantiated, I changed that DVSR from 50 million to 8. If you go back to your super register, the default value on that guy was 50 million. But when I instantiated it, I overrode it and changed to 8. So now I'm just going to wait 8 clocks before I do something. So if I come up here and zoom to full view, you can see what happens here. If I click right here and then I transition, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And there you go. And now I'm counting. I'm counting from 0 to 1. Then if I go 1 clock, 
two clocks, three clocks, four clocks, five clocks, six clocks, seven clocks, eight clocks, and then that's going to do MS tick, and then there is where we get the uh, two. So it's like zero. Let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And there you go. And then we transition. So what this allows me to do is um, simulate and trigger on eight clocks rather than 50 million so I can make sure that everything's working. And here I've got the enable and it starts to count. Let's close this guy and uh, see if we can get it to down count. Well, we can get it to down count by setting DN equal to 1. Let me save that. Let me uh, recompile everything. Come up to here. Behavior check syntax on that guy. And at that point, let's see. Make sure the test bench is selected. Simulate behavior model. And now we enabled and we should be down counting. So if we do that, all right, let's scroll these guys back here. Okay. And there you go. Yeah, so notice right here we're starting at zero. And at zero, that's a min tick because we are down counting. And we go to F, E, D, C, and B. And notice, uh, let's see, where's the down variable? The down is right here. I asserted down to start down counting there, and I enabled it just before. So now it's working, and I'm triggering basically on eight every every eight clocks. Okay, now we could change this up a little bit. Let's see, I'm come out of here and do yes. Now let's go back to our test bench file where I instantiate that, and let's change this to four clocks. Okay, so I change that default value from 50 million to four. Let's uh, recompile everything, component. Test bench file, check syntax, and then double and then simulate behavior model. And now my counter should work every four clocks. So, see what I've done is I've built a counter where I can vary the delay by using a generic. And there you go. Notice what we have here. There is one leading edge zero, one, two, three, four. And now it's down counting to F zero, one, two, three, four. And there's E. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and now it's D. So we can vary how, uh, how fast our counter goes. Let's change it one more time to illustrate this. And let's change maybe on, tw oh, let's do 20 clocks. Okay. Let's uh, compile that guy. Check syntax on that one. Check syntax on this one. And let's see, make sure that's selected. Simulate behavioral model. And let's zoom to full view. And now notice how many clocks uh, do we have? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And there you go. We're down counting zero to F. Down counts asserted, enables asserted. So you can vary. So now you've got a variable delay by using a generic. So the next thing what you want to do is you want to flip this guy over and do uh, implementation and then use the default value of 50 million. So this is the guy you're going to use for hardware. You're going to override it when you instantiate it for simulation. Uh, part three, we'll actually look at the hardware implementation of this. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in part three.